Hello, my name is Frederick, and today we will be talking about the Steam Deck. I ordered my Steam Deck back in 2022, and I managed to get one in September 2022. Now, back then, I did record a unboxing video, and I wanted to share it at that time, but I never got around of editing the footage. Now, six months later, I'm on vacation, have a bit of spare time. So I thought like, why not do a combination video where I show you the unboxing and then later on my experience of using the Steam Deck. Well, enjoy the unboxing and I'll see you right after that. Hi, my name is Frederick, and I finally gave in last May and got myself a Valve Steam Deck. And uh, today I uh, got it in the mail and I will be opening the box. So it took about three days before the package arrived. Um, I think I ordered it on Friday. I got the confirmation mail that I could continue with my order. So on Friday I did continue with the order and paid. It's now Tuesday, so it uh, arrives in about three business days, which is really good. All right, um, so let's open this box up and see what's inside. I'm really excited. It's like uh, almost Christmas, I would say. Okay, so there's uh, a big warning sign that I have to plug it in first and then power it on after I've plugged it in. On the other side of the card, there's small instructions where the buttons uh, are located for the menus and where to insert the micro SD card if you have one. So I've ordered the 512 gigabyte version. It has the better case and it should have the better screen and it should have a faster hard drive. All right, so here in this box uh, is the power supply. So this is a USB-C power supply. It's a three amp for five volts uh, power supply. And I suppose I can uh, use this for other things as well. Delivers about 45 watts of power. Okay, let's take out this. I've put my green mat under here so uh, you can see actually sizes. I think one square box is about half a centimeter. There's a plastic wrap around it. So we can see here on the cover, it, the contents is one video game machine and a case. So it's supposed to be in there. Aha, it seems to be sealed. So we're gonna have to cut it open. That's actually really good because that way you know that you have a Steam Deck that's never been opened before. So there you go, small seal. And then we can open up the box and I'm suppose I had it the other way around, so let's turn it around. And wow, there you go. It is quite bigger than a Nintendo Switch. For comparison reasons, I'm just gonna put the Nintendo Switch next to it. As you can see, it is quite a bit larger than the Nintendo Switch. And let's take it out of the case. So with the five, wow, this is really big. But it does feel good in the hand though, it has a nice grip. The buttons feel nice, the joysticks feel nice and the trackpads feel nice. So it is really big, but to be honest, it feels quite comfortable. So in the box, in this 512 gigabyte version, the box is also a uh, cloth to clean your screen. And then on the bottom, there's a little bag where you can put in the power supply and store it that way. That's a really good feature in my opinion, because usually those boxes don't really uh, have space for the power supplies, but in this case, they actually um, did an effort. And it feels really high quality, I must say. I'm pretty pleased with the Steam Deck. Well, I'm gonna first charge it up now and then uh, power it on. Okay, so I got myself an extension cable um, and now I can put in the power supply. So the USB-C is right up here 
and there's immediately a light going on and I heard a little sound. So let's turn this on. Nothing so far, let's press a bit longer. Ah, there you go, I heard a blip now. So it does take a while to start up. Maybe that's because it's the first time. Um, in the meantime, I could actually take this away. It does seem to take its time when booting. Okay, this officially boots longer than any PC I own at the moment. Ah, there you go. Okay, so the clock is on, let me see, 4.12 a.m. Um, that is not good. Uh, let's see if we can put it to Dutch or Netherlands, like they say it. And then I can use, uh, get the time zone in. And since I'm in Europe, I'll select the UTC plus one. And then I can add in my Wi-Fi credentials. So I'm gonna do that off screen, of course. All right, so I managed to get in my Wi-Fi connection and it immediately starts updating, which will take about 40 seconds. Oh, it just went up to four minutes. It does seem to make use of the full speed of my internet connection, which is about nine megabytes per second. I must say I always find timers um, pretty funny because they always say how many minutes is gonna last and it, it's just never right. Whatever uh, device you buy, if they say it's like three minutes, it's gonna be longer or shorter. It's, uh, I know it's an estimate, but like four minutes probably won't be a half an hour. But as you can see, it kind of jumps all over the place. Um, it goes to five, four minutes, then to three minutes, and then back to three and a half minutes. I must say, um, if I want to talk about the look and feel, um, I must say it does feel a bit plasticky, but it does feel solid. So yes, it's, uh, it's definitely different than a Nintendo Switch, which, yeah, feels a little bit more high quality, I guess. I must say that it doesn't feel particularly low quality either. It's just, yeah, just a bit plasticky, but yeah, it does feel solid though. It's not like a floppy plastic thing. Okay, 20 seconds. Let's see if that's really 20 seconds. If the counter is gonna reset or not. I must say the high quality screen is quite nice. It does feel like there's a, like a coating on top of it which makes it look a bit different, I guess, but yeah, less shiny, which, which is, uh, I think, an advantage. Okay, so the machine has completed its download for the uh, update, and now it is rebooting. And I've heard the fan kicking on and off uh, during the uh, download, so I suppose the machine will get hot. I'm gonna feel it for a minute. It doesn't feel too hot to the touch yet though. It's a little bit hot, but it's not like scalding hot or anything. It just feels warm. Oh, there you go. Now I got sound even. Okay, well, I can start uh, filling in my credentials. Okay, so I managed to get through all the credential stuff and um, as you can see, my whole Steam library is showing up. I do got about 190 games uh, in my Steam library and there's about 20 of them that says they will be great on Steam Deck. But I can see like Transistor is for example a good platform game, kind of a platform game. I think the Little Nightmares will be great to play on this. No Man's Sky might run properly but that's a game I'd rather play on PC anyway. 
I'm not sure yet, but I might actually do some gaming videos with the Steam Deck. I'm looking into it because I usually do more technology or Blender kind of stuff, but I do like to play the occasional games as well. So I hope uh, you enjoyed that unboxing part of this video. And um, now I like to talk about my personal experience with the Steam Deck. In, in general, just short, I really enjoyed uh, having my Steam Deck. I think it's a really nice uh, gaming uh, console, uh, but it does have a couple of things that I like to address or that other my people might find important if I mention them. Well, one of the things is that the battery lasts about two to three hours, which is okay for a gaming console. Uh, but mind you, if you put it on standby, it still uses, in my opinion, quite considerable power. So if you leave it for a couple of days, it's gonna be flat. So if you wanna store it uh, for a week or so, you better turn it off completely. And that is it with an iPad or with uh, another uh, kind of machine that is always on, another device that is always on, that seems a bit, you know, power hungry in my opinion. So it's not really an issue, but you have to keep it in mind. If you don't play for a couple of days, you better turn it off. So the controllers themselves, um, especially the little joysticks, uh, they feel really nice, they have good grip, but they travel a tiny bit too far in my opinion, like two, two millimeters or something like that. It's not a lot, but just enough for uh, my hands to have a feeling that they are, that it's too, that the travel is too far. Uh, one of the other things is that text doesn't scale always that well. Uh, it's a device which is 720p. It's not a very high resolution device. So uh, for graphics, it's fine, it doesn't matter. And I know why they did it, because they want to have maximum graphics capacity at lower resolution. The, the chips can do more at that resolution. Um, but uh, there are games that don't scale well with text and it becomes hard to read. Now they do kind of uh, mention this when they say if games are compatible or not. But honestly, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it, could be better, and if games don't uh, support UA scaling, then this can be a problem. Uh, for example, my daughter uh, is playing Farm Together, which is a small farming game, and the text is really tiny there, and there's no way of adjusting it, or it doesn't seem to adjust properly anyway. Uh, so yeah, that can be troublesome uh, if you want to read the, the small print, and the, the game has a bit of text, so that's not always nice. So performance of the Steam Deck is really good. Um, I never had games that are actually slowing down or having frame rate issues or anything like that. It's really uh, enjoyable and the fan doesn't really turn on that often. Uh, especially if games are lightweight then you never hear the fan. So it's mostly at updating or when booting that you can hear the fan. While playing, I, yeah, not that often to be honest. Then the look and feel of the machine is, you know, it, I said it in the unboxing video, it does feel a little bit plasticky. It al also feels quite chunky. It's a big handheld console. Uh, the, there are much smaller ones, but it doesn't bother me that much. But for traveling, this could be an issue because the console is obviously bigger. It works well, even if you have smaller hands like I do, uh, or my uh, children's hands, they can still play with the Steam Deck. It's not a problem. The screen is really nice. Uh, I have the uh, more expensive version and it has a, like a coating on it and it works really nice. It looks really nice. Uh, it's also quite responsive for touch, although you usually use the controls anyway, but the touch can uh, be convenient for certain menu items. So the games that I played uh, in the last six months, uh, one of my favorites is Little Nightmares. I kind of started that game on the Steam Deck and I finished it and I thought it was a really nice game and the Steam Deck works perfectly for games like that. So platform games are extremely well suited for the Steam Deck. Basically any console games um, work really well. So uh, for example I played Lego uh, Harry Potter uh, which works well, Lego DC Villains is one, um, Evoland. Uh, so as you can see, they're all kind of uh, platforming games. Um, 
Uh, I think I also played Transistor and Spiral Knights, which is more of an MMO, but it feels more like a platform game anyway. The Steam Deck works extremely well uh, when it's designed for console games, but I also had a game that I kind of bought specially for the Steam Deck, which was Terraria. Uh, but honestly, for me, it didn't work at all. I had the feeling that you uh, did need a mouse to uh, play properly. And so for me, it was one of the games that I kind of bought and then asked to refund for it for like after half an hour, because in my opinion, it wasn't really playable that well. And it got frustrating really quickly. I can imagine it's nice on the PC, but since I have so many other PC games, um, I asked to refund for it. One of the nice things of the Steam Deck is that it's Linux based, so it's a bit like a desktop system. If you want to, you can kind of reboot in a desktop environment and then you can start installing things like Chrome and use it as a web browser. Uh, you can even put it in a docking station and it becomes a kind of a portable PC and a decent one uh, that is, but I haven't used it in that capacity uh, very much. But yeah, it's nice to have a web browser on there when you're traveling. So that's it for this video. I hope you have been informed a bit about the Steam Deck. If you're still thinking of getting one, I do recommend it. It's, if you need a portable gaming system, it's really nice. It is more expensive than a Switch, a Nintendo Switch. But honestly, if you have a really large uh, library of games on, on Steam, and uh, yeah, for me, there were about 20 games that were really nice for the Steam Deck it could be a, a nice gaming platform uh, for you as well. If you like this video, uh, hey, put a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. I do some Blender videos as well on tutorials. So if you got that way here, uh, maybe consider subscribing. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.